Yo, what's going on, hey push people? I have a brand new video on Key Concept 1.1. This one is made specifically for the revisions to the new curriculum. So this is the most up-to-date video that you will find for Key Concept 1.1. Please make sure you go to apushreview.com. Check out links in the description. I got links to short answer questions. Everything you need to prepare for this test will be found at apushreview.com. Before we begin, it is shout out time. I'm giving a shout out to my boy, Mr. Martin and his class. He is right by me in the 716 of Buffalo. So thank you, Mr. Martin. Huge shout out to you and your class. I appreciate the support and good luck to you and your students this year. All right, let's take a look and see what Key Concept 1.1 says. As native populations migrated and settled across the vast expanse of North America, over time, they developed distinct and increasingly complex societies by adapting to and transforming their diverse environments. Keep in mind, Native Americans were vastly different from tribe to tribe and group to group. This one is straight out of page 25 of the new curriculum framework. If you don't have it, download it now. It will be hugely beneficial. I got a link to that too in the description. And the big idea for this video is how did natives adapt to their environment? Be sure to be able to explain this in case you see it on a test. All right, key concept 1.1, Roman numeral one can be best described in one word and that is maize or corn. Different native societies adapted to and transformed their environments through innovations in agriculture, resource use, and social structure. So we're gonna talk about the impact of maize cultivation or the growing of maize. This was very popular in the Southwest and present day New Mexico, Arizona areas. Societies developed vast irrigation systems to bring water to the maize. And we see this, especially in the Pueblos near the Rio Grande River. So how exactly does maize transform societies? Well, there's less of an emphasis on hunting and gathering, and we see an increase in population, not only for Europeans when maize wakes its way, makes its way over to Europe, but also for Native Americans. And we see the establishment of permanent villages with socially diverse societies. And these permanent, develop, these permanent villages develop because people are growing maize and have a constant food source. An example of a socially diverse city is Tenochtitlan, which is present-day Mexico City, 250,000 people live there at its height with many different social classes. All right, let's jump on over to the Great Plains and the Great Basin. Here in red is the Great Plains, and most natives here lived off of hunting and gathering. There was a lack of natural resources with the basin, which is kind of on the west coast over here. It's a large flat area that was very arid or dry, and the plains were made up of mostly grassland. In the introduction, the horse, which will come a little bit later from the Spanish, with this introduction, life on the Great Plains was drastically altered. Bison hunting became much easier. Natives with horses became stronger militarily. So it was a huge advantage for natives who had horses. Natives in the Great Basin hunted bison and sheep. And like natives on the Great Plains, horses helped natives become more powerful for those living in the Great Basin as well. All right, let's jump on over to the Northeast Mississippi River Valley and the Atlantic Seaboard. Many societies here were a mix of hunting and gathering, and there was agriculture and, and agriculture, and they developed permanent villages. So let's take a look at present-day New York and Pennsylvania. We have the Iroquois Nation of Native Americans. They, like all many Native Americans, adapted to their environment. They did so by burning forests to hunt and grow crops. And villages were built around maize. Again, we see the importance of maize. And the Iroquois were a matriarchal society. That means it is a society that has power based on female authority. So it is based on the mother's side of the family, not the father's like most European families. Women were instrumental in councils and decision making, and women would tend to crops and they oversaw the community affairs while the men were off hunting. So they played a very predominant role in society. The Cahokia Indians near present day St. Louis, which had around 30,000 people in 1200, they built these giant mounds that could be up to about 100 feet high. And this was the largest settled community in the America, in present day America, until New York and Philadelphia surpassed them in 1800. All right, the Northwest of present day California, we have roughly 300,000 natives living in California prior to the arrival of Columbus and other Europeans. Most of these societies were based on hunting, gathering, and foraging. They would gather nuts, fish, and they hunted as well. These societies tended to be ruled by wealthy families. We have the Chinooks, 
who were a group that advocated warrior traditions and they used advanced fighting techniques and they lived in long houses which could house many families and they used canoes as well for fishing. So let's finish this up with some test tips. Well, for multiple choice and short answer questions, you may see something like a map of different areas of North America, how do natives adapt to their environment. Essay questions, it's not very likely since this is from period one, although you may Although you may see something about Native Americans that can extend into period two, which we'll talk about in the period two videos. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you right back here for Key Concept 1.2. We'll figure out what this technological advancement is. Played a very important role in exploration. Um, best of luck to you, May. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and share this video. And please make sure you check out apushreview.com. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want a shout out to your teacher, leave them in the comment section below. I thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.